Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good day to all of you. Asalaamu Alaikum. So I'm very delighted to be presenting the public lecture for the 63rd Raymond Max Sai Award, which I have received and I'm very thankful for. And I would personally like to thank the Raman Max Sai Sai Foundation, the family members of the of Raman Max Sai Sai uh, people, uh, and of course Victor and Susan who have worked so closely with me in in helping me uh, throughout this whole period from the time uh, in late August that I received uh, this prize. So I would like to tell the story of my life, and uh, naturally. I start from the laboratory and down to the people. So the, my, I've titled this talk from the laboratory to the people, creating impact on science and communities. And I will tell you my story. So I have uh, been working on infectious diseases all my life and I work at the ICDDRB, which is known in many ways as the cholera center of the world and in Bangladesh. But cholera is an ancient disease. It is, uh, still creates epidemics and outbreaks. It is an ancient disease that you see writing in the Bible and other holy books, but it continues until today. It is a disease seen in fragile populations and uh, earthquakes, floods, man-made disasters, especially uh, when people are displaced from one person to another, like you see in Syria, Yemen and in Cox's Bazar, where we have uh, people from Myanmar in Bangladesh. So if you look at Bangladesh, we have, you know, the cases that we talk about, like 109,000 cases annually and 1.64 incidence rate per thousand population and at risk population, it is about 66 million people are at risk. Every year at the ICDDRB where I work, we see over 20,000 people coming in. Cholera comes in two major peaks, but even without peaks, you see cholera in crowded circumstances, like now in Bangladesh. So our research has been based on understanding, my research with my team at ICDDRB has been based on trying to understand natural cholera disease, which has led to understanding the burden of the disease the immunity that the disease causes to people and protects them from further disease, the host response and as well the host and the pathogen interactions. So Vibrio cholerae is a gram negative bacteria belonging to the family of Vibrionaceae, highly motile organism. It's a wonder to, wonderful to see it under the dark field microscope where the, the rapid movement of Vibrio cholerae yeah, in, always ma feels me, makes me feel very happy. Not because it causes disease, but because of the, the excitement with which they move. And uh, in order to understand the disease, we've done uh, together with my team, nationwide cholera surveillance in Bangladesh since 2014. And not that we weren't doing it before, but we did very good, um, well-organized, uh, well-planned surveillance in 22 sites in Bangladesh. And we got insights where in Bangladesh we have cholera in the 22 sites and it varies from 3% in one area to over 15% in some areas. And so we, you have seen the map of Bangladesh and in this map we have places east, west, north, south where the epidemic uh, pattern is different. In Dhaka city you have a spring peak and a after monsoon peak, in other countries you have winter peaks or different peaks. Even it varies from east to west, north to south. So we, based on this, we have been thinking of many strategies for prevention of the disease. And uh, we know that Kumilla, Chittagong, Dhaka, Cox's Bazaar, Narayan Ganj, and the south of Bangladesh, uh, Bakir Ganj, is very high in cholera. We've also looked at uh, our main emphasis is on Dhaka city because it's the capital of the country. We have a large urban population living in slums, almost 40% of the people. And there's a high burden of cholera based on the ICDDRB cholera data. So it's a hand to mouth disease. The more you live in unhealthy conditions, the more you do not have clean water to drink, you don't have, uh, you have bathrooms to share and you do, cannot maintain hygienic conditions, you will have cholera. So we have also tried to understand it in the lab to understand the disease and the vaccination 
efforts and we worked looked at patients with vibrio cholerae infection and we found that they develop robust immunity, robust immune responses. They produce antibodies, they produce T cells, Th1, Th2, CS17, they have memory T cells, they have helper T cells and a very, viv very strong immune response even in young children. And the magnitude of these T cell responses is also directly uh, related to the memory B cells that uh, come up. You understand memory cells are very important in infection and in vaccination because if you, are, if you have memory cells then these cells get activated every time you get exposed to a pathogen, to that same pathogen. And so for cholera we have very good memory B cell responses and also T cell responses. We know that cholera also gives not only a non-inflammatory disease but it produce a very strong pro-inflammatory response and this pro-inflammatory response is seen in patients in vaccinees. It is very good for us to have some level of pro-inflammatory response as we have seen. We have also been able to produce monoclonal antibodies not only in mice to cholera but also from human cells from patients who have had cholera disease and we have produced monoclonal antibodies that can be used for diagnostic purposes in collaboration with Harvard Medical University, Emory University and I am not naming names. You can see all these brilliant people in my unit who have been working together to understand cholera better. And we have other infections, this is a, other infections that pose, pose a problem for children in Bangladesh but also for adults. I will also focus on another major enteric disease which we are very about, worried about all the time and that is typhoid fever. It belongs just caused by uh, bacteria belonging to the family Enterobacteria C, it produces disease and uh, Salmonella typhi uh, is the pathogen that causes uh, typhoid fever. And we have done a lot of studies, you can see in this picture a child with undifferentiated fever with febrile illness and you do not know whether the child has got dengue or chikungunya or kalazar because just fever, no other symptoms can be present. So, it is very difficult to diagnose typhoid in comparison to cholera because a person can come in with half their body weight lost in cholera, you can understand it is can be it is profuse dehydration. But with typhoid a child can languish for 7 days at home and nobody will understand that he has a disease that can be such a big problem. And so the source of the organism uh, is uh, Salmonella typhi and you get acute typhoid fever patients and also chronic carriers. So, a person who has had typhoid, uh, typhoid can carry on the uh, pathogen in their gallbladders and in other organs and we can keep on secreting it and can be a very a big source of infection for other people in the house, in the community. And it is like cholera transmitted to food and water and uh, there are many complications that can arise from uh, typhoid fever. Uh, Cholera is a non-invasive disease that it does not get into the blood usually, but typhoid goes into the blood. It has a gut response, gut phase and it also has a blood phase. So, it can cause intestinal perforation, encephalopathy, bleeding, shock. So, it can especially in young children it can be a major cause of problem. And also there is a lot of antimicrobial resistance in these bugs. So, you get, but the best thing is that you get high antibody responses in both the mucosal and systemic immune responses in compartment and these are stimulated in disease. And we have also seen by whole genome sequencing of Salmonella in Bangladesh using uh, the Illumina platform that these bacteria have the non-H58 genotypes carrying fluoroquinolone resistance mutation uh, that uh, are actually uh, quite uh, dangerous. They are the MDR1 H58 um, and these can these are things that we have to worry about a lot because of the high scale at which antibiotics are being used in Bangladesh. So, I am talking about the laboratory until now or uh, high throughput techniques, but what have we done to prevent these disease people from these diseases in Bangladesh and the two examples. So, together these two diseases cause 20 over 20 million cases and at least 250,000 deaths globally and Bangladesh has a major portion in these in the, in the deaths. How are we trying to find a solution to this problem in Bangladesh? 
and how have we contributed from my team for elimination of typhoid and cholera. So I'm going to talk to you about this story on the field level. We are focusing both on vaccines, both which are taken by the mouth and also those that are injected. So a little bit about vaccination in cholera. So in cholera, traditionally uh, until the 70s and late 70s, early 80s, the vaccines that were given were injectable vaccines uh, by parental route. And these vaccines gave only short term protection, were, gave a lot of side reaction, side effects and was not very immunogenic. It did not prevent uh, anyone from cholera for a long term, maybe for three months, did not, was not very protective. But the concept of vaccination changed from the parental route to the oral route uh, from early 1980s. And then the inactivated cholera toxin B subunit vaccine was developed in collaboration of ICDDRB with the Gothenburg University in Sweden. And the first trial was carried out in Bangladesh in our rural site in Matlab in 1980s. And Ducorol, the vaccine that was te tested was then um, registered and WHO pre-qualified as Ducorol. Uh, so it has, it, it is a vaccine as you can see in the field trial in this photograph when a vaccine was, uh, the first picture is of a parenteral vaccine which hurt a lot. The second picture is of the parenteral vaccine, oral vaccine given to people uh, um, and also the oral saline that is given to people. Then from 20, 2000 onwards, the concept changed. The thought big process began that vaccines need to be, become available to people, make, make it easel, easily feasible for people to take, uh, make it affordable for countries to use. And from then the development of an affordable, simple formulation called vaccination began. The first vaccine was Shancol registered uh, by um, pre-qualified pre by WHO and that was used in many of our trials in Bangladesh and many studies and campaigns all over the world. Followed by this, we used that uh, technology and through our, uh, through our innovation, through our persistence, the vaccine um, have been tech transferred to Bangladesh and transferred to a company. The first vaccine you see on this picture, this, the, this vaccine is the Colvax vaccine, similar, absolutely the same as the vaccine Shancol that was first WHO pre-qualified, same as UVcol that is produced in Korea um, by Ubiologics. And this has been tested in Bangladesh and we find it to be non-inferior to Shancol. And there's another vaccine, a simple vaccine made only with one strain, which also is a collaboration with uh, Sweden and other collaborators. And we tested this uh, in Bangladesh. It was tech transferred, formulated in a company in Bangladesh and we tested it. And we showed that both the vaccines are non-inferior to the Shancol vaccine, which is WHO pre-qualified. So we have a step forward. We have carried out large cholera vaccination campaigns in Bangladesh from 2011 onwards. Before that, we have done many, many, many trials. So we seriously thought about doing campaigns in Bangladesh, doing studies that would bring us closer to using the vaccine in Bangladesh. So we've done, we've uh, at least used 5 million doses to test feasibility of the oral cholera vaccine in urban slums in Dhaka city where the, uh, the hospitalized rate due to cholera is very high. We have also used about 5 million doses of uh, the vaccine uh, of the vaccine in fragile populations of Myanmar nationals who were forced into Bangladesh from August 2017. And we believe in our calculation in a population of 170 million, we would need about 173 million doses of vaccine in the next four years to eliminate cholera. Based on all this, a national cholera control plan has been formulated and we have a multi-sectorial plan and which is to not be isolated. You use vaccines and also use other approaches for prevention of cholera. Cholera is a hand to mouth disease, contaminated water, food, especially water and uh, lack of hygiene, lack of uh, sanitation, lack of knowledge about hygiene and sharing of bathrooms and all these factors lead to cholera. So a multi-sectoral plan has, is important to have 
both vaccines and wash and surveillance together so and uh, in order to test this uh, so we have carried out this vaccination in cox's bazar among the forcibly displaced myanmar nationals and the host population in cox's bazar just to remind you in our surveillance in 22 sites we have found that cholera is very high rates are very high in cox's bazar so when the myanmar nationals were forced into bangladesh our first thought was how do we prevent them from cholera and cholera deaths and that is why the who global task force for cholera control sent vaccines in a matter of 7 days after request from bangladesh and from that time onwards there have been seven campaigns in bangladesh and uh, and some in the many in the fdmn population but some in the host population because the host population in cox's bazar live very close to the Uh, refugee population and they can be at risk also and so we have done a lot of these vaccination the last one com- was completed in november 2021 and we are waiting for more vaccines and uh, there was a lot of delay due to the covid-19 pandemic but we are now i hope on our way to the to uh, elimination we now have a slide to show you the national cholera control plan for bangladesh which was approved by the Glo- government of bangladesh in 2019 and the plan is from 2019 to 2020 to have oral cholera vaccine that will cost us about 0.43 billion dollars we will have a lot of effort on wash will will which will cost us about uh, 3.13 billion dollars and we will have a surveillance which will be least expensive but still surveillance why to know whether these programs are being able to eliminate cholera and reduce cholera so we need a budget of about 4 billion dollars to achieve on this so the global road map objective is to reduce the mortality resulting from cholera by 90% by 2030 and bangladesh is one of the eight countries with high cholera burden that has been chosen for this elimina- elimination program and so our short term goal is to reduce cholera 25% by 2021 mid term is 50% by 2025 long term is 90% by 2030 and so we have key interventions for this from 1 to 6 that we are trying to regenerate reactivate our, in spite of the covid pandemic that we have seen and we have first step of this uh, activation was to carry out a campaign in Bang- dhaka city which was a demonstration project can we do it and we did it we used six thanas in dhaka city uh, as you see in this uh, table and the six thanas we had so much participation from the community everybody no matter from where they come came from the urban slums or from the well well uh, middle class people or rich people they were all came for vaccination and so we finished all this by february 20 march 2020 by february end of february and we had to stop the second vaccination because these are two dose vaccination programs we had like the covid vaccine and we had to stop it because of the pandemic and we were under lockdown or had problems and we could not vaccinate and our health system was very busy trying to curb the epidemic of covid So now I will talk about typhoid fever and the initiatives we have taken for introduction of vaccine for prevention. So we have had like the cholera vaccine different types of cholera typhoid vaccines um, uh, since 100 years. So first of all there is the parenteral VI polysaccharide vaccine before that there was the inactivated typhoid vaccine like the parenteral vaccine you saw that I showed you for cholera it hurt a lot gave not that much protection and then it was withdrawn uh, no it's not used and it's uh, did not give any protection to ch- children um, less than 2 years of age but only important for children above 2 years of age so then there was this typhi ty21a oral cholera vaccine but this cannot be used below 5 years of age because children don't mount a, mount a response then has come the typhoid conjugate vaccine the tetanus toxoid conjugate vaccine vitcv and which this we have it is a who pre qualified vaccine only one dose is needed it is immunogenic in children in all ages it's it has 
hopefully a prolonged immunogenicity we think we have seen in our field sites shown to have minimal side effects and it gives us 85 protection uh, protective eff effectiveness in children 9 months to 16, 15 years of age less than 16 years of age and so we are very excited about this study which has also been shown to be very good in Nepal and in uh, other countries in Africa. So typhoid vaccine initiatives are being carried out for introduction of typhoid conjugate vaccine. So we, we need a protective vaccine for children, we have it now, we have disease burden data from our studies, both community and hospital, hospital based surveillance is available now. The community based data has come from my team at ICDDRB in collaboration with countries University of Oxford and so forth. The Gavi Alliance has approved 85 million to support introduction of typhoid vaccine in developing countries. The Bangladesh NITAC in a meeting on in July 2021 has recommended use of uh, the typhoid vaccine in routine immunization and catch up campaigns. So this is a single dose vaccine can be given at 9 months or can even be given at 6 months but it can be co-administered at 9 months when the measles rubella vaccine is being given. Surveillance and disease burden needs to be continued which we are carrying out. COVID-19 however reduced the initiative and the speed at which we were going for the introduction plans. But we are hopeful now when so much vaccination for COVID-19 has been achieved in Bangladesh, we have almost 40% coverage uh, in the target groups. Our team has had had many problems, my MIVU team uh, to change course due to COVID-19 pandemic which temporarily halted ongoing studies when the COVID pandemic started in March 2020 in Bangladesh and also shook the world. So our natural studies that we were carrying out in cholera, the surveillance programs that we were carrying out, the typhoid responses that we were studying, the genome analysis in cholera and typhoid, the preemptive vaccination that we were carrying out in Dhaka city, the many cohorts were terminated because we could not progress and uh, we then developed and initiated projects on COVID-19 because our team was well set not only for study of cholera and typhoid and other enteric diseases but also for seroprevalence, natural infection, vaccine trials, pathogen studies for COVID and we have also done a lot. We have already published about four or five papers minimum in which we have been able to show that we have in mild disease, even in mild disease, 100% of COVID-19 patients are seropositive for IgG antibodies to the receptor binding domain and only and about 45% asymptomatic also respond but newer studies show that all asymptomatic patients um, also respond with antibodies. We have done a lot of studies in collaboration with our teams at ICDDRB, with the government team, IDCR with other program leads in program for emerging infection and we have shown that at the national level there is about zero prevalence level all, already by April to October had risen to 52 percent. In the slum, the, in Dhaka city, in the slum it was 74 percent so the exposure must have been very high. In the non-slum it was a little bit lower but we also saw that COVID-19 antibody responses in high socioeconomic status in high density areas was higher than uh, because of the nutritional status and, and the healthy nature of these people. We also showed that uh, right now the antibody levels are very high. In our latest studies we have seen even in rural Bangladesh about 80 to 90 percent people have zero converted to COVID antibodies. So that means we have reached a high level of zero prevalence but I won't say we have reached herd protection because that will come both with vaccination and natural exposure. So we've done many things we are now we have four vaccines that are being given of the seven vaccines that have emergency use authorization in Bangladesh and of those vaccines we have uh, be looking at uh, um, the AstraZeneca Covishield vaccine, the, uh, the other three vaccines are Sinopharm vaccine, the um, two other vaccines are Moderna and Pfizer vaccine and we are looking at the antibody responses and the longevity of an antibody responses together with IDCR and with funding from USAID, Gates Foundation and uh, support from ICDDRB. And we have seen, seen that 
by after taking the first dose of COVID vaccine 93 percent participants become zero positive and by second dose 100 percent participants become zero positive at two months after second dose. We have done a lot of studies and we have seen that uh, uh, the vaccine antibody lasts even after three months or six months as you can say in the last bar on the on the slide. So, antibody levels go down but do not go down drastically they still remain. But we know that antibodies IgG antibodies do come down with memory B cell responses these climb up again as soon as there is exposure. We are also looking at the genom genomic epidemiology of SARS-CoV-2 at ICD-DRB and in my sister organization at IDESHI which uh, I lead also and we have involved with the COVID-19 genomics in projects and we are continuing our efforts to follow the Wuhan type to the alpha, beta, delta and now the omicron. And so, we do this all with Minion sequencing and where possible with Illumina sequencing and we have collaborated internationally with uh, the um, with all countries the Mass General Hospital, with University of Gothenburg, with uh, Nick Thompson at um, Sanger Institute and our collaboration has taken us very far with these uh, vaccine studies and the genomic studies. So, in conclusion I would like to say I have dedicated my life to in infectious disease research to achieve all the success over the last three decades not only for myself, for my country and for ICD-DRB. There have been many initiatives that we are working on that I am interested in. I am a very ambitious person on cholera, typhoid, E-Tech, rotavirus, Shigella, H. pylori, hepatitis E vaccine and infection, meningococcus and rabies which are key problems in Bangladesh. We have ex successfully executed our study findings at the policy level both nationally and globally especially with examples that I am showing you for typhoid and cholera. However, COVID-19 has shaken not only our work but also halted and delayed many regular activities but we did not stop and I am thankful to my team both national and international and the collaborations we continued our work in consulting with other stakeholders, donors, sponsors and collaborators. And finally, I would like to spend the rest of my life on infectious disease research and finding solutions as much as I can together with my team and I thank everyone who has been so helpful in my effort in my life. First of all, uh, the, all the donors that have always come forward uh, in the universities and the sponsors and also uh, the core support that ICD-DRB gets without the ICD-DRB format we would not have been able to work and I thank you all and also the Raman Maxaisai Foundation for the great honor that they have given me that they have bestowed on me. Thank you very much.